What's going on everybody? Nick from The Sound Coop here and I want to apologize. I've been completely out of touch for the last couple of months. I've been working on a couple of massive video projects, but today we return with the mighty Mulecaster. This thing is something special. I don't know if I'd call this my number one just because I haven't gotten my head and hands completely around this guitar yet, but if I had a fire, in my home, this is the first guitar I'm grabbing. There's a lot of special things about this guitar. The one thing that I find really special is every time I pick this up, I get a song out of it. And before I'm a guitar player or a producer, I'm a songwriter. I mainly like writing songs and all of the rest of this stuff is sort of a way to facilitate that process. And this thing does wonders for the songwriting process. I don't know what it is. Matt often says that these guitars are different and as a result, they make you make different musical choices. And I think that that's probably accurate. I think anytime I pick this thing up, it sort of puts me in a unique headspace, and I think that allows for a solid creative process. But there's no real way for me to show off this thing's songwriting abilities. So I think I'm just going to kind of run through some of the things that I think sonically are awesome about this guitar. So I got a little track put together here. Uh, I'm just going to lay down some lead parts over it. And uh, one of the things I think is interesting to pay attention to is how much you can get out of just your right hand. And I think I'll get into the specifics of that later, but I think as you're watching this play through just kind of pay attention to what I can do with my right hand in terms of the dynamics and how I can control the instrument and the amplifier. I'm not using any pedals here. So this thing's running directly into a twin reverb. I normally have that twin reverb set at around eight and a half. I literally went into my amp locker and I turned that thing all the way up to 10. So we're running into a dime twin reverb here. We're going for maximum headroom, we're going for maximum loud, and then we're gonna see how much maximum soft we can get out of this thing at the same time. So let's get into it. All right, so that track I just played over has got a little bit of a Mark Knopfler vibe, which in turn has a little bit of a J.J. Kale vibe. When I think about a track like this, I tend to think, hey, a Strat's going to work really good. And it's kind of cool that this Mule Caster will sort of variate between a Strat type tone and something that's a little bit more like a P90. It's just all what you do with your right hand. So as a point of, for instance, there's a couple of very simple moves I'm making in there that I think really illustrate what's going on here. So I'm not hybrid picking at a Greg Cock level here, but I'm doing a little bit of hybrid picking. So I'm keeping my pick in these fingers and I'm using these two fingers occasionally to sort of play little two note chord structures or phrases. And so one of the ones I was using really often in the beginning was this one, I'll do the. So 
So that's really nice. It, it's really clean. So I'm, I'm barely playing with my fingers there. And I can really dig in. Right? So just a little bit of differentiation in how hard you're plucking the strings with your fingers makes a big difference. You go from just that right there, it kind of sounds like a clean fender thing. But if I dig in, that sounds more like a P90 kind of a thing. So there's another move that I'm making, and Knopfler does this a lot. I think the way he gets this is, I think he kind of turns down the volume knob on his Strat, and what he'll do is he'll do that kind of bluesy move, like... And that's got a little bit of heat on it right there. If I take the time to mellow out my right hand... It sounds real Strat-like, and if I dig in... It's almost like I just turned on a Tube Screamer. And it's the same thing with those little high-end, like, rake licks. You can play that real hard like that. Or you can play it real soft. And it makes all the difference in the world. It's really weird because my Stratocaster won't give me all the upper end of that. It won't give me all that. If I plugged in a Strat right now, it'd be really easy for me to get all those glassy sounds, those... Real easy to do that, but it will be difficult for me to get this. And all that is, is just the right hand. Conversely, if I plugged in a P90 guitar, it'd be really hard for me to get this glassy. And it would be really easy for me to get the... It really gives you the best of both worlds just by variating what you're doing with your right hand. And that's kind of magical. It can also be a little bit difficult to get your head and hands around this guitar. When I pick up this guitar, especially when I'm going into a recording scenario, I need to be extra careful, extra attentive to what I'm doing with my right hand. Because other guitars, like a P90 guitar, will just eat those dynamics. Um, whereas this guitar, it'll give you everything you put into it or everything you don't put into it. Another thing I think is really interesting is if you're playing like a Strat style guitar and you're playing real light, That doesn't even sound good on a Strat. It sounds real wimpy and weak. When you play this guitar extremely light... But when you dig in... It's awesome. So, I just... I don't know a guitar that spans both of those Strat and P90 worlds, and it does so in just a really elegant way. There's a lot of great Strat style guitars, there's a lot of great P90 style guitars. This thing will just walk that line perfectly, um, and it just all depends on how you want to interact with it. So now that we've gone through some of the sounds and dynamics, I just kind of want to wax philosophical about this guitar for a little bit, sort of get into what I think makes it unique, and I want to sort of um, get into some of the things that I've seen Matt say, either in public posts uh, or in messages that he and I have had back and forth. I think that'll sort of help highlight some of the differences between a guitar like this and your typical electric guitar. For all intents and purposes, this is an electric guitar. We have a body, we got a neck, we got a fretboard, we got frets, we got pickups, we have all the necessary electronics. So what makes it different? Well, the neck is basically a neck through all the way past the bridge, actually. And I don't know if it goes all the way down here to where the, the strap button is, but it at least goes to here. I can see it. I can see the piece of wood in there. So the neck and this chunk of wood that runs all the way through here bolts up to the bridge. And I think that transfers all of your left hand energy really well down into the body. And because the body is hollow, I think it sort of amplifies your right hand. We don't have a resonator cone here, but I think this body is kind of creating a resonator cone for the pickups to sort of work and interact with. At the end of the day, I just, I can't say it any better than the man himself. And this is one of the coolest things about Mule as a company. Matt is very interactive. He posts a lot. He posts a lot of like his philosophy, not on just making guitars, but on life, which is really cool. And he's very happy to communicate with not only his fans, but the people that support him financially. I exchange messages with Matt regularly and he always responds. And it's never just like a, oh, hey, thanks. Or, you know, he always... If I have questions, he's happy to get into it. If I'm 
just sort of blown away by what I'm experiencing, he sort of explains why it is the way that it is. And so this is just one interesting thing that I think he said to me. I was sort of talking about how what you do with your right hand makes such a big difference, and I was just amazed by the guitar. And he said, it's all hollow steel, man. It's much more efficient transferring energy from your right hand into the guitar. So I think the hollow steel, I think that's right. It's much more efficient at transferring the energy. He's nailing it there. And then he's basically saying, which is why the nuance of your right hand comes out more. Totally right. Like headroom on an amp. And I think that's an interesting way to think about it because when I put this thing into a dimed fender, I'm getting the max out of the amp that I can get. I can't get any more out of the amp. So then the guitar becomes the place where the headroom happens. And so it's all a matter of, well, how hard do I want to push the amp? And it's funny because I feel like Stratocaster guys, like if you think about Jimmy, Stevie, John, Mike McCready, these guys all play strats and these guys are all known for just beating the heck out of their strats. It's almost like when you get a strat to 10, the only way to get it to 11 is to just beat the heck out of it. And it's sort of funny because I feel like guys that play P90 guitars or Les Paul style humbucker guitars, they use the opposite technique. What they'll do is they'll turn down their volume knob. And you can, of course, do that with this guitar. If you're set up the way that I am and you're running at full on the volume knob, you can turn this thing down and get yourself really into clean strat territory very easy. So it will do that thing that like a normal PAF style or P90 style guitar will do, but it will also allow you to control that with your right hand. So instead of having to fuss with the knob and like, is that right? Is that right? Oh, let me adjust it again. You can just really work your right hand to get those same sort of dynamics, which is great. It, it just, it puts the player more in control so you're fiddling less. And it, again, it bridges those, both of those worlds between the Strat and a humbucker style guitar perfectly. Let me just point out one other thing that I think is really interesting about this guitar and Matt kind of cleans this up. This guitar is never shrill and it's never muddy. It definitely has a thick undertone to it. I think when you play a note, you're getting more harmonic character from this guitar than you would be from another guitar. I think this guitar really imparts an awesome harmonic character and those harmonics help build some of that dynamic amazingness that this guitar possesses. It's never shrill and it's never muddy. And so this is what Matt said when I kind of mentioned this to him. He said, hollow body equals never shrill and steel equals never muddy. And so, I mean, I don't know if those two things are true, but I think that's an interesting way for him to phrase it, that those two things make the guitar the way that it is. And so it really makes this guitar perfect for a lot of situations. One thing I've wondered since I got this guitar, I'm curious how many times Matt had to build out a prototype before he got this. And I say that because there's just not a lot of options available here. You can add a flamed maple neck if you want. You can add benders if you want. But he only offers one bridge type. He only offers one set of pickups that he makes himself. And I just want to think about something like that and how perfect this guitar is. I just can't help but wonder, like my intuition tells me that it would probably take someone a long time to get something like this right based on how many things are different compared to a normal electric guitar. But based on what I know about Matt, I have this weird feeling that he might have just nailed this right out of the gate. Like, maybe not the first one, but, I mean, I don't know. There's something special going on here, and when I get something special, I tend to think that it probably took a lot of work. But um, it wouldn't surprise me if he got this right very early. It's just, it's an amazing guitar. And I think one thing that I think also has to be said is, I'm a songwriter, and before I got into electric guitars, I did almost all of my writing on an acoustic guitar. Writing on electric guitars is something I've been doing for eight or 10 years. But for you know a decade before that, I was writing almost exclusively on an acoustic. Writing on this reminds me of writing on an acoustic. So if you're the kind of person that's a songwriter and you're looking for an electric guitar that reminds you of your acoustic, I think this is a really solid option. The neck is very flat, flat like an acoustic neck would be. Not super, super flat, not crazy flat, but it's really amazing how much this reminds me of my acoustic guitar. Um, just the how thick the back of the neck is, the width, the curve of the fretboard, it all feels like I'm playing an acoustic. When you strum it, this whole thing acoustically It's not as loud as an acoustic, but 
it has a similar presence in the room. And I really like that. So maybe that's why I find it so easy to write on is because it just instantly puts me back in that headspace. But if you're a, an acoustic player who's looking for an electric that inspires you the way that an acoustic does, I think this is a great guitar. And I think the dynamics of this sort of resemble an acoustic. Like anyone that owns a nice acoustic, you know like you can play very light on it and it just sounds amazing and magical. Or you can dig in and just turn that thing into a percussive monster and this will do exactly that same thing. You can play it light and it still has a nice full sound to it or you can just dig in hard and make this thing wail like a banshee. Just like an acoustic guitar, it, it has acoustic guitar dynamics with electric functionality and that makes it really unique. So again, I would grab this first if I had a fire for a reason. This Mulecaster is nothing short of amazing. Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, I'll see you again soon.